Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts, and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. You will find links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. So last time I recorded an episode, I went over my Make 9 2022 goals, and I also announced that I had a giveaway to um, give away <laughs> for the next episode. So I asked for, it's a needle felting kit. This was donated by Joy, a viewer of the podcast. And I just wanted to make sure that this kit went off to somebody who was really going to enjoy doing it since of course not everybody everybody likes doing needle felting or is interested in learning about it so I wanted to make sure it was going to go to somebody that was interested in it so I asked if you wanted to win this kit that you would comment below the previous video with the words winter birds and so I used the YouTube random comment picker to choose a winner and the winner's username on YouTube is 11 so congratulations to you if you would please get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com or you could direct message me on Instagram as well. That's perfectly fine if that's convenient for you. Let me know your full name and mailing address and I'll be happy to get this off in the mail to you as soon as possible. Thanks again, Joy, for all, I mean, so many <laughs> uh, wonderful prizes that you donated to me to give away to all of you viewers. So thanks again, Joy, for your generosity, and I hope that you really enjoy this kit. Today I am wearing my Vaux vest, which I knit last year. It is a beautiful design by Mary Jane Mucklestone, and I used quite a few different little scraps of yarn, pretty much. Yeah, I used pretty much scraps of yarn. It's made out of DK weight yarn. A lot of my own hand dyed yarn is in this. I use some alpaca, that's the dark brown color, and then some hand spun yarn from this from Slothy Creations. Um, that's the purpley color and then the orange color that you can see here. So I really love this vest. It was a really fun thing to make. It was a steaked garment. So the neckline and the armholes were both steaked. So that was really, it was just a really cool process to, to make this vest and I really enjoy it. It is such an, a, a wonderful, it's the only vest that I have ever made or that I own. And I just really enjoy having it as part of my wardrobe. I have a few finished objects to share with you all and a lot of works in progress to share today. I'm gonna to do things in a little bit of a different order today than I normally do just because I think it'll kind of make sense once I go through all of my projects. But I'm gonna start off with a work in progress. I'm holding it in this pretty big wool bag that my husband's aunt gifted to me. And my I was talking with my stepmom before Christmas and just a few weeks before Christmas, and she asked if I would be willing to crochet an afghan for my stepsister. And I had made a blanket for my stepmom years and years ago, probably back when I was still in college, I'm sure. So probably over like 20 years ago, probably. <laughs> um, and she still uses it every day and loves it. And so she said to me, do you still crochet blankets? <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course, I love crocheting blankets. And she was kind of apprehensive, I felt like. And she said, well, would you be willing to make one for Kelly? And I was like, yes, I love, I said to her, I just love making things as gifts for people, but I just don't know what people will want. So if I know that somebody wants something, oh my goodness, that's even better because I love gifting things, but sometimes when I'm gifting things as a surprise, I hope they like it. I don't know, you know, I hope they'll use it. But if somebody specifically wants something, 
ah, that's so great. I just love it so much. So anyway, she asked for, she asked to, if I, she could pay me to make it for her. And I said, well, I'm not going to make it if you're going to pay me because that just takes all the joy out of it for me. So I, she said that she would pay for the yarn. I said, I, well, I said, you can just pay for the yarn and that would be enough for me. Otherwise I don't want any other payment. So she, um, agreed to that. So I, um, got this book earlier in 2021 at our local thrift shop. It's called A Year of Afghans, 1997, and it was put out by Leisure Arts. 1997 is when I graduated from high school, so that's kind of fun. Um, so, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's not a new publication by any means. And it has a lot of beautiful designs in it. But this is the design that I picked. It's called Rosie Trellis. And I don't see a specific designer on this. Um, it's not listed here. But it's made, isn't it gorgeous? I just love the design so much. I think it's so, so pretty. It's made using worsted weight and it's made in strips. So you can see each of these strips is made individually and then you seam them together according to the pattern. I have made a lot of progress on it because I've really stayed focused on it lately. And so I think I'm gonna have to stand up to show you my progress so, for, so far. So I have done six strips so far. And here they are. The pattern calls for me to make nine strips. So that's what I'm planning to do. And I think it'll be a really good size once I get it all put together. I love the texture of this so much. I just think it's so beautiful. It's a really fun stitch. The, the main stitch pattern includes these, they call them split trebles, where you're doing treble crochets into two different areas, but it just makes such a beautiful design, I think, and it's really, really fun. It did take me a minute to just get the grasp of it, you know, I had to really look at the pattern and, you know, carefully and go line by line with the instructions, but it's really clearly written. There's, I don't see any errors in the pattern writing at all. So it's beautifully written, easy to understand. And there's also a very descriptive, there's picture diagrams here in the back to show exactly how to do the different stitches, which was also really helpful when I was just learning that stitch. I am using all Red Heart Super Saver yarn. The colors I'm using are soft white, and the tan color is called buff. And then I'm using two different colorways that are an ombre on their ombre line. So you can see the colors shift in the pink and the blue. The pink is called anemone, and the blue is called true blue, I believe. Let me double check that one. Yes, true blue for the blue color. I'm using the recommended hook, which is an H five millimeter hook. And I'm following the pattern exactly, except for the joining method. I decided to join as I go. So on the very last round, I have been slip stitching into the stitch across from where I'm supposed to be joining in order to attach the new strip. So it's just, coming along really nicely. I absolutely love this, the detail along the edges here. I think that's so pretty. Those are made using front post double crochet, sometimes triple crochet maybe. I think triple crochet stitches. Anyway, US terms. 
Okay, so I have the other three strips are in the works. I have two of them at the same point where I have done everything except the soft white color. So you start off with the pink color and you make a long chain of these loops, pretty much, these interior loops, and then you crochet again back into those same loops with that split treble crochet stitch. And then you're just working all the way around as you add on the extra colors. So I have two that are at that stage. They're ready for the soft white color for the final two rounds and then to attach them. And I am currently working on the last strip, adding in the blue color. So this is how it's coming along. I had been making the strips completely one at a time, but I decided to kind of change out how I was making them because I wanted to use my leftovers from these strips or from the specifically from the anemone colorway. I wanted to use my leftovers of the anemone colorway to make the next project that I'm going to show you. So I knew I was going to have quite a bit of that left over and there was a bit of a time crunch on the next project that I'll show you. So I wanted to just quickly make up these strips so that I could have, you know, have all of that yarn used up that I needed to for this project before I went and used that same yarn for my next project. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so that's why I'm kind of doing things in a different order now. But anyway, it's coming along wonderfully. It's so enjoyable at this point. There, the, the row... Um, the first row of the soft white where I'm doing these stitches, I still have to look at that one, the directions for that, just this end section, just because it's, it's written kind of, it's kind of hard to understand. Not, it's, it's easily understood. It's just, there's a lot of steps to get through this end piece. So I do have to look back at the instructions for that section, but otherwise I've got it all memorized and it's really, really an enjoyable project to work on. So I'm hoping to get that done. Actually, it probably won't take me more than, I would guess maybe three more days and I'll have it completed. Maybe even less than that because I was, if over the holidays, I was working on this pretty faithfully and I was able, when I had a day when I didn't have a lot going on, I was able to make one strip per day. So, and I've got, these last three strips are almost done. They just need two more rounds pretty much for each of them. So it really won't take too much longer to finish this up, I don't think. And then my stepmom asked if I'd be willing to make another blanket for a friend of hers. So that may be coming up in the future soon. We will see. All right, so the next project that I wanted to use up that anemone colorway to make is a finished object. And it is a surprise for my daughter, who's outside and hopefully well out of earshot. I think she is. She's outside, I think, playing by our creek. So she's a little ways away from the house and can't hear me. So she had asked me a little while ago to make her a new pair of leg warmers. She is in dance class and she thought it would be nice to have a new pair of leg warmers for dance class. So I made these for her, I had made her a pair of leg warmers a long, long time ago. I bet when she was maybe four or something like that. So they are obviously too small for her now. She is going to be uh, turning 11 next week. And so she was ready for a new pair. So I'm so excited to work these, that to have these made up for her. And I love how the color gradient of that ombre yarn worked up into these leg warmers. I didn't use a pattern for these, a published pattern. I used a stitch dictionary that I got from my friend Tina for around, well, we exchanged gifts for Christmas last week. And Tina gave me this wonderful stitch dictionary from her grandmother. So it's called, I think it's a French publication. It's called Montricot. Knitting Dictionary, 900 Stitches Patterns. And 
It doesn't have a publication date on it, which I thought was strange. It says it won an award in 1963, so maybe that's when it was published, but it doesn't actually have a publication date that I could find anyway. But anyway, and let's see, does it have... It says the ink, yeah, it, it was translated from French to English by Margaret Hamilton Hunt. So anyway, I don't know if I'll try to find this online, but I kind of, I'm pretty doubtful that I'll be able to find it online to link to it. But anyway, I used that to help me out with the different stitches that I use throughout these leg warmers. So I cast on, again, this is a worsted weight yarn. I cast on 48 stitches and used a US 6 four millimeter needle for the entirety of these, these leg warmers. I did a one by one ribbing for 15 rounds. And then my original plan was to use this stitch for the entirety of the leg, which is on this page and it's called Seed Stitch Simple. And I thought that was just gonna be so nice to use throughout the entirety of the leg warmer. But I just didn't, it wasn't showing up very well. It looks so prominent on here, but maybe it's just because I'm using this yarn, it's acrylic yarn, and so maybe that really makes a difference. But you really can't see, I didn't think you could see much texture in that section at all. So I, I uh, decided to put in a few different stitch patterns, as you can see. And I just took them all from this same page. So, and this was really nice because it tells you the multiple, you know, how many stitches you need to do the pattern. You know, whether it's a multiple of five, a multiple of four. Since I had 48 stitches, I just made sure that it would work. Whichever pattern I picked, I made sure it would work with my stitch count. So after I did, I believe, like a, mm, I think 11 round, 11 rows of the seed stitch pattern. Then I did a purl row to break up the different stitch sections. And then on the next section, I did a chevron stitch through here. <laughs> and that is right here. It's called chevron seed stitch. That showed up a bit better, I thought, so I was really happy with that section. And then the next pattern I thought I would try is this one here. It's called Caterpillar Stitch Vertical. I did change this one to have a shorter length here. So in this original one, they do that stitch for six rows. All of these patterns are written in rows instead of rounds, so they're knit flat. So I did have to do a little bit of figuring out how to change that from being worked flat to being worked in the round, but it wasn't too difficult. I just worked the wrong side rows opposite. Anyway, instead of doing every six rounds, I did every four rounds. So my little caterpillar stitches are just a bit shorter than that pattern, but I did 12 rounds of that stitch. And then the last section of pattern here, I did the grading stitch, which is here. So I really love how that one turned out. And that I think in hindsight would have been beautiful for the entirety of the leg. It's just such a pretty stitch pattern, I think. But I, I do like the variety of the different stitch sections throughout the leg of the pattern as well. So I'm happy with how it turned out. And then I just, again, did the 15 rounds of one by one ribbing and did a sewn tubular bind off for the end here. And I think she'll really like them. I'm so excited that I was able to get these done really quickly. Um, I was obviously doing it in secret. And so I had to just sneak it in when she wasn't around and yeah, I'm so happy I got them done with plenty of time. And so now they're gonna go back into hiding <laughs> until next week. Okay, another finished object that I whipped up pretty quickly is this enormous, <laughs> this is a balaclava. Is that right? I always, I always question myself on that name. Balaclava, yeah, that's right. This is the basic balaclava pattern by Mary Ann Davis.
and I knit this for my husband, Chris. I had knit this same pattern for all five of our children a couple of years ago, and my husband asked for one. So I, my ha husband has a very large head. <laughs> I uh, measured it and it's a little over 24 inches in circumference, so that's pretty big. So I decided to knit the extra large adult size. This pattern comes in several, several sizes. I would say four or five maybe. And I decided to go with the extra large size according to the, you know, the sizing given in the pattern. It did turn out a little bit too big for my husband. It's just, I mean, it fits him. He's worn it a lot already. But he said, well, if you make me another one, maybe you could make it a little smaller next time. So I might do that to have a, an extra one for him. I haven't blocked this at all, but I might try just to wash and dry it. It's made, again, in acrylic yarn. This is Lion Brand Vanna's Choice in the gray marble colorway. So I, it probably won't shrink much, but I thought maybe I could just try to launder it and see if I could get it to snug up just a little bit for him. But this is a really well-written pattern. It's so easy to follow, I think. Well, I mean, I have made, this is my sixth one now, but of course I haven't knit it in a couple of years and it was really easy for me to follow again and remember how, you know, I didn't have any problems with it at all. It is knit from the bottom up in the round and there's an option to do this extra flared collar section or you can also just leave that off and just make the neck piece but the flared collar option is really handy to have. I feel like you can really tell that this is dirty already. He's worn it a lot. I think there's quite a bit of dirt in this area but anyway. <laughs> um, I, so you just knit from the bottom up the, the neck area and then there's some short row shaping for the chin section. And then you knit the regular hat section and do the crown decreases. And then you go back in and pick up stitches along the face opening and knit ribbing for a little while, for about an inch, a little over an inch, I think. I used the recommended needle size, which was US 8 five millimeter needles. I did not check my gauge, but it's probably a bit too loose, which is why it probably turned out a little bit too big for my husband, but that's okay. It's still wearable and he's still using it and it's keeping him warm in the winter weather. So it's a success anyways, even though it's not perfect. Okay, my next finished object is just a dishcloth. I am holding my, I'm working on another one and I'm holding my other, my next dishcloth in this bag that I made for myself. It, um, from my last shop update, you might recognize this fabric. This is the one that I made for myself and I had to piece together a couple of pieces for the back section because I didn't have any more full pieces of this fabric, but I loved it so much. I wanted to make one for myself. So I am uh, just trying to restock my dishcloth. I like to have little sets of dishcloths to gift to people periodically, whenever. <laughs> and so my over the holidays, my stash kind of got depleted. And so I'm just refilling that up. <laughs> I have a basket that I keep all of my little dishcloth sets in and I'm just filling that basket back up. So anyway, this is a free pattern online called Grandmother's Favorite Dishcloth. And I will link to that. Of course, it does not have a designer's name. It's just a really old pattern that was put online for free. I used for this, I used Lion Brand Kitchen Cotton in the Blue Ice colorway. It's 100% cotton worsted weight. I used US 6 4 millimeter needles. And I only increased or no, the original pattern calls for you to increase to 44 stitches, I believe, and I increased to 52 stitches before I start decreasing again. But it's super simple pattern, of course. I also finished one other one over the holidays and already gifted it to my mother-in-law. 
and it was knit in the dish picks dish picks, knit picks, dishy in the jalapeno colorway. But I didn't take a picture of it or anything, but it's just like this, but in green. <laughs> and then I have started another one. I have this dishcloth that I made a long time ago and it hasn't had, I like to make a set of three dishcloths when I gift them. I just think that's kind of nice to gift three at a time. And this one's just made, was made up out of some scraps, as you can probably tell. I just had a little bit of this mint color left over and I just used up what I had and striped it in with this tan color. And I believe these, these were both knit picks dishy as well. But anyway, I've had this in my stash for a long time and it doesn't go with anything else. So I wanted to make a set to go together. So I got some more of the Knit Picks Dishy in the mint colorway and I'm gonna do the same thing but striping it with different colors. So the first one I'm, I've started is striped with just white. Can't spread it out on these. I've decided to go with um, some straight needles. I used to knit my dish cloths on some Knitter's Pride needles I think I had. I like to knit my dish cloths on wooden needles and the cord on the, that, that was a circular set of needles and the cord on that was so annoying. It was always curling up and getting in my way. So I thought, I'll just get some wooden needles. So these are Chow Gu needles and they're bamboo, and they are the six, four millimeter size. Anyway, so I'm really liking them a lot, except of course, I did have to get used to not dropping the second needle. I'm so used to using circular needles that I'm, I just drop the needle when I get done with a row, and I have lost this, you know, the extra one a couple of times. <laughs> it's fallen in between the car seat, you know, <laughs> as I'm riding along in our car, but. I haven't lost it completely. It's just gone, you know, I've just dropped it a few times. <laughs> anyway, I really like how these colors are striping up together and I'm just going to make it exactly matching. I'm gonna have a, one little section of the white at the end so that it will be a matching set. And then the third one that I will make for this set will be striped the mint and this gray colorway, which is called silver. So that will be the next one that I make for this set of dish claws. So that's fun. Of course, super easy and transportable. So those are great to have on the go. All right, now I am done with all of my finished objects. So the rest of my projects are all works in progress. The first one is being held in this beautiful bag that I was gifted by another viewer of the podcast named Denise. It is from Longview Creations and it's an Anna Green Gables themed project bag. I was being so faithful to work on my advent projects. I had two pairs of socks and this sweater that's in this project bag that I was working on faithfully every day until about a week before Christmas and then I got sidetracked by other projects. <laughs> so anyway, this one I really have not touched since the week before Christmas, I think. So I have made a little bit of progress though since the last time I showed it to you all. So quite a bit of progress, well, a few inches. So this is a pattern that I am pretty much making up myself. I did follow a few of the stitch um, numbers, you know, how many, how many numbers to cast on for the neck, the turtleneck. And then I am following the yoke increases increase numbers from the stone ham poncho by diana walla that i knit a few years ago and i had modified that pattern <laughs> to turn the poncho into a sweater and so i'm i like the fit of that sweater and i'm kind of basing my stitch count for this sweater on her pattern but it's a lot of, there's a lot of differences. So I just cast on the number of stitches that she called for for the smaller size of her poncho. The poncho comes in two sizes and I'm knitting. I started off with the stitch count for the smaller size. 
The yarn that I'm using for this is a 100% non-superwash fine merino wool bear and it's fingering weight and I'm holding it double to make a DK weight. I knit a one by one ribbing for seven inches, I believe. Yes. I used a US 3 3.25 millimeter for the ribbing and then I switched up to a US 5 3.75 millimeter for the body of the sweater. And this is the project that I am using all of the beautiful mini skeins that Emma of Potter and Bloom sent to me for our Christmas Advent swap. So every day I striped in one row, one round of the different colors that she sent me. And then I would put in one round of the bare yarn in between each color stripe. I absolutely love how this is coming along. Here is a progress keeper that Emma also sent to me marking where I was last time I showed this off. So it's gone from pink to blues, purples, and oranges. And I absolutely love how it's coming along. I actually don't remember what day I left off on. Let me count. 21 days. So I only have three more days to stripe in. So that's not bad. I thought I wasn't, I, I was thinking I was further behind than that, but that's not bad. So I'm only going to do three more stripes of the colors and then I will just do plain, just the rest of the sweater will be in the bare color. I think it's going to be so pretty to have that beautiful faded rainbow type of yoke. And then the rest of the sweater will just be in the bare yarn. I think it'll be a beautifully stunning sweater. So I'm super excited about it. And it's fitting really well. I tried it on recently and it's fitting, fitting really well. And yeah, I'm so excited about this and super excited to get back to it. But as I mentioned in my last episode, my whips are just a little out of hand. I have too many and I need to focus. So that's what I've been trying to do. I'm trying to finish up that blanket. And then the next project I have been working on this a little bit more recently as well. This is being held in a project bag that I was gifted by the Bead Sisters podcast. And on here is a cute little notions pouch from Carista of Sweet Mountain Crafts. And in here are my little Chex socks. I Last time, two episodes ago, I showed that I had finished the first sock, which I love. I think it's so fun. And I'm getting really close to finishing this second one. The yarns I'm using for this are the black and the dark red are my own hand dyed yarn in a, on a sock weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight base. And then the bright red colorway is from Regia in the castaway colorway. So here is a little squirrel progress keeper that's marking where I was last time I showed these socks off. So I had just started them and, or started this second one. I hadn't gotten very far into it. And I have put in the waist yarn for the heel. It is an afterthought heel. And I did the umbrella heel by Kay Jones. So that's different from the original pattern but I really like the fit of this heel. I knew that it fit me and so I didn't want to risk putting in an afterthought heel that wouldn't fit my foot since I have a really high instep. I have made afterthought heels before that just don't fit me very well and are not comfortable. So I wanted to use that heel since I knew it fit me really well. So I only have, let's see, I need to do three more color stripes before I do the toe and then go back and do the heel and they'll be all done. So these are coming along really well. For the, I, I knit the extra, no, I'm sorry, the large size for these socks. So I cast on 72 stitches. For the ribbing, I went down to a double zero, 1.75 millimeter needle to, I wanted that to be tight enough because I just thought with 72 stitches, they were gonna be way too baggy. 
for me because I usually lately have been knitting my socks with 60 stitches on US zeros. So I wanted to try to tighten that up as best as I could. It's a one by one ribbing. And then for the body of the sock, I went up to a US 2 2.75 millimeter needle. And as you can see, my, my color work stitches are really bunched up pretty, pretty badly before blocking. But once I block it, they stretch out pretty nicely and are not bunched up as much <laughs> as badly. They're not perfect, but it's a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited to get these done. I think they'll be so fun to have. So those are coming along really well and should be done. Again, they don't need a, much more work, so I should be able to finish those up in the next few days as well. My next project that I haven't put a ton of work into these as well, the last time I worked on them was around Christmas time, but they're being held in a Me Made project bag. And they are my West Yorkshire Spinners socks. Emma gifted me this yarn as well in our advent swap. So this is from West Yorkshire Spinners in the Signature Sparkle 4-ply in the vintage, vintage tinsel colorway, which is so gorgeous. I love it so much. And last time I showed these, I was up here. So I've made a little bit, quite a bit of progress, I guess. It's just been so long since I worked on these. But this is another one of those cute little ornament progress keepers that Emma sent to me. It was also on this sweater. I don't know if I mentioned that she had sent me those. I cast on 60 stitches for these and did a two by one ribbing for five. I went through a full color stripe repeat there. And then I'm just knitting plain stockinette for the body of the sock. I'm using US zero two millimeter needles for these. And I'm about ready to put in the heels, which I can't decide what I should do. I'm planning, I'm, I think I'm, I've gone back and forth on what color to use for the heels, but I think I'm gonna use this color, which is Knit Picks Stroll in the Everglade Heather colorway. And I think that will look really nice. I also have a blue that would match that color really well, but I think the green will be better to make it look especially Christmassy, which I think will be so fun. I, I think I'll use that. But I also am not sure which heel to put in. I was planning to just, to, to just do a heel slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which is my favorite heel normally to use. But since these color stripes are pretty thin, I am a little nervous that that will really change the, I don't want the stripes to get too thin around the gusset area where there's extra stitches on the needles. So I'm kind of debating putting in the umbrella heel on these socks as well, but I haven't decided, but I need to make a decision because I'm about ready to put in the heel soon. So we'll see what I decide on that. <laughs> My next work in progress is being held in this beautiful progress ba project bag that Emma also sent to me in our advent swap. And it is from Jibby Roo Sews. It's got this cute little heart on it with some glittery fabric on the bottom. And then on the inside, it says Merry Christmas. And in here is another, my final Advent project. But I have had this on hold since that same time <laughs> where I put everything on hold. And I've even transferred these to some DPNs that I'm not knitting on these. I'm just holding my stitches on these for now because um, I need the needles for the next work in progress that I will share with you. I am making the 24 days socks pattern by Emma of Potter and Bloom. And aren't they beautiful? I just love how they're working up. Here is another progress keeper that Emma sent me. She just showered me with so many special treasures. And I love this one, isn't it so fun? It's got little star, sparkly stars in there. So cute. Anyway, I am 
For the main color for these, I'm using Knit Picks Stroll in the Midnight Heather colorway. That's a uh, fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then for the color stripes, I am using the colors that I sent to her for her advent swap that I did with her. I don't have all of the same colors that I sent to her because some of them I didn't have enough left over to use for myself. But for the most part, I have all of most of the colors that I sent to her. And so I'm just striping those in and I love how they're turning out. I think they're so pretty. I love how the dark color really offsets the bright colors in these yarns. This comes in, a, this pattern comes in one size, so it's 64 stitches, and I'm using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles for these. Since the slip stitches tend to tighten up the sock a lot, I normally have been using US 0 2 millimeter needles for my fingering weight regular socks, but um, I decided to go with US 1s just to make sure they weren't going to be too tight with the slip stitches throughout the pattern. Oh, they're so pretty. I can't wait to get back to these. I forgot to mention that the ribbing is one by one twisted ribbing. Oh, I can't wait to ah, focus on these. I just have too many things going on right now. I can't focus on everything. <laughs> I need to, I need to focus, which I am doing now. Okay, my last work in progress is being held in another me made project bag. I had to keep one of these for myself from my last shop update because it was my favorite fabric. And in here, so <laughs> we got together with my husband's family. He had a brother and fa his family visiting. They were visiting from North Carolina and anyway, so we all as a family got together the week before Christmas. And while we were together, my mother-in-law a couple of times said, made comments about how I knit my own socks and how she thought that that was really incredible. And I didn't have a great gift to give to her at that point. <laughs> it was only a week before Christmas and I, my husband and I had been talking about what should we give her and we didn't really know. And so then she said that and I was like, oh, I can knit her a pair of socks. And I said, I've knit a pair of socks in five days before. I know I can do it. Well, I was wrong because <laughs> there was way too much going on the week before Christmas. You know, I don't know. We were just busy. We were baking a lot. We were, um, like I said, we were getting together with family and there was just way too much going on. I was getting ready to host Christmas for, well, both that weekend and then we were hosting Christmas on Christmas Day. And so I was doing a lot of stuff for prepping for that. So anyway, it was the day before Christmas Eve when I realized there is no way I'm going to be able to get these socks done in time. Um, but I have made a lot of progress on them because there for a few days I was completely focused on them. And I had this beautiful pattern from Anna of Anna Knitter that she gifted to me. This is her mystery advent knit along socks that she designed for this last Christmas. I also made a mistake on something. <laughs> I don't remember now. I know I made a mistake somewhere in this pattern and I had to rip back a little ways. I had already gone quite a bit further than this I'm currently on the gusset decreases and I had gone quite a bit further in the gusset decreases and I, I guess I just got off on the pattern, I think. Anyway, so that was another thing that was just like, okay, this isn't working. This isn't going to happen right now, but I am still going to make these for my mother-in-law. They just obviously were not gifted to her this last Christmas. Maybe I'll save them until Christmas of 2022. I cast on 60 stitches for these. And I meant to use a US 0 2 millimeter needle, but I forgot that I was using a US 1 2.25 on the 24 days socks. And I just trans, I needed, I, ne I thought I needed these needles. <laughs> and so these are the needles that I stole from the 24 days socks. So they're US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, but I think that it's working out well. I don't think it's too loose. I think it'll be great. So I did one by one twisted ribbing for these as well for 20 rounds. And then I was really inspired by this pattern when I was knitting the leg warmers because of the way that Anna put in these different stitches and how she separated them with pearl bumps. So I kind of borrowed that idea from Anna after I realized that 
the stitch pattern that I started the leg warmers in wasn't going to work out and I was going to want to try to put in some different stitches. So thank you, Anna, for inspiring me to do that throughout these, uh, throughout the leg warmers, but I kind of took the idea from you. <laughs> anyway, I am using my own hand dyed yarn for these as well. It's just in this burgundy color, my vineyard colorway. When I dyed yarn and sold it, that's what I called this was vineyard. And again, it's on the 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight base. And then there's just these beautiful different textured sections throughout the pattern. I love how they are looking so much. This beautiful progress keeper was one of the gifts that Joy, it even says Joy on it, so I can remember who it's from, that she had sent in that large box and she had said I could keep a few things. So this is one of the things that I kept. I don't remember if it's by, I don't remember who the maker of this one was, but it's just a cute little cup of cocoa with some peppermint bark on the top of it and a little holly berry and it says Joy. And then I also am using a um, row counter from Twill and Print to keep track of what row I'm on. And yeah, like I said, I've already done the slip stitch heel flap and I am working on the gusset decreases. But I have not touched these now since the 23rd of December because <laughs> I'm just distracted. But I will definitely get back to these. I'm going to stay focused on all of these whips until they are done, until before, I think before I cast on anything new, I'm gonna try to finish up all of these works in progress before I start anything new, we'll see. But <laughs> that's my plan for now. So those are all of the projects that I have been working on in the last month or so. And I hope that you all really enjoyed seeing all of them. I hope that you all are doing well. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that so much. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I would appreciate that as well. Again, I hope you all are doing really well. Take care. Bye-bye.